Ten feet. Yeah. Hallelujah. Have your Bibles turned to Genesis chapter 4. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to kind of take off a little bit from where I was last week. Um, I guess Alan kind of touched on a little, a couple of things that I'm, I want to talk about today. I, I, I have a title for Caleb, so he won't have to text me this afternoon. It's called Sin at the Door. You already get that. And he usually texts me on, on Sunday afternoon. Hey, what was the title of your message? I, I, I ought to tell him, just whatever you think it ought to be. <laughs> Genesis chapter 4, we'll start reading verse 1. It says this, well, let's, let's pray first. Father, thank you for your word as we receive it today. We receive it from you. Holy Spirit, you are the great teacher. We depend on you. Open our hearts and pour in a blessing and pour in what you want for us today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 It says, Adam lay with his wife Eve when she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. And she said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. And later she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought forth some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions from the, some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, and you, but you must master it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out to the field. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. We'll stop right there. Now you all know the rest of the story. God came to Abel, or to Cain. Cain, where's your brother? I don't know. I'm my brother's keeper. We're not going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about sin crouching at the door. One of the things that we have to realize when, when you read in Genesis, and I, Alan said that Genesis, Exodus, those, those five Pentateuch books were his favorite. Uh, there, there are a lot of, there's a thing in Bible study called the law of first mention. And when something's first mentioned uh, in, in the Bible, it's important to know that because there's a lot of groundwork and foundational things that are laid out in, in the book and a lot of things that happen in Genesis that you read over them and, you, and, and you know, it's, it's easy to read those stories. But when you go back and, and when you look at the Bible as a whole, we see that a lot of the foundations for things were laid in Genesis. And a lot of, and this is, and this is one of those things, and that's kind of what I, I'm going to talk to you today about. Gonna, I want to talk to you about sin at your door, uh, but I'm also going to talk about what God has done for us in regard to that sin, and and how He laid this foundation for us from the very beginning. Um, you know, <clears throat> the if we look and and see and ask ourselves, well, what was what was Cain's sin? I mean, what, what was so bad about what Cain did? Because what Cain did doesn't really seem too bad, right? I mean, Cain was a farmer. He, you know, farmers have corn and wheat and beans and tomatoes and all those things. And, and so when Cain approached God to bring an offering to God, he brought, he brought an offering and it was the things that he did. It was the things that he grew with his hand. It was the things, it, it, was, it was his produce. But it was rejected. Now the Bible tells us that Abel was a herdsman. And so Abel had, Abel had sheep and goats and cows and those sorts of things. And so Abel brought what he, Abel brought what he had. And Abel brought that to God, and he presented it to God, and it, and it says that Abel's offering was accepted, and Cain's offering was rejected. And it seems, it almost seems unfair. You know, I don't know that there's, I don't know that the word fair concept is really in the Bible. Um, 
certainly in, in the school of hard knocks, life's not fair, right? <clears throat> but um, what we're going to talk about is sin. And, and really, if, we could, if you could put a short answer or a short definition on sin, it would just be this. Disobedience to the will of God. Now, um, you, you, well, if you look at it and you, and you say, well, how did Cain know? There's nothing, there's nothing in the Bible that nobody said what Cain was supposed to bring uh, and, and, or what, what Abel was supposed to bring, but it, it actually does, and we're going to talk about that. Um, you know, um, let's, well, let's, let's flip back. You might, already, you might be on the same page. You might have to flip back the page. But if you look at Genesis chapter 3. Um, skip down there to, to verse 21. And there's something that's real. You know, you, you could skip over it. And you could miss it very easily if you're not ready for it. It says, The Lord get, made garments of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Simple sentence, but here's what here there is a concept that we have to that we need to look at. Number one, Adam and Eve had just sinned. Okay, Adam and Eve. Well, we don't know how much time there was between Adam and Eve's sin, their being uh, ejected out of the Garden of Eden, and birth, the birth of Cain and Abel. I would, I would say that verse 21, the, the verse that happened, or the, that we just read, happened immediately after Adam and Eve were taken out of the garden. What, what, were, what was Adam and Eve's response when they were, uh, after they ate the fruit? Do you remember? What, what's one of the things that they did? They realized they were naked. They covered themselves with fig leaves. They covered themselves with fig leaves. Because they were naked. And when God came into the garden, when God came down into the garden, he said, uh, Adam, where are you? And Adam says, you know, we're, we're hiding because we're naked. And God said, well, who's, who told you you were naked? Did you eat from the tree? And then all the other stuff happened. The Adam blamed the woman, the woman blamed the snake, God cursed the snake, the woman, the man. They were ejected out of the Garden of Eden. But even this is a story of God's love. Um, if, if you read, we read on the, the rest of uh, verse 21, or below verse 21, it says, And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil, and he must not have allowed to be able to reach his hand. And take from the tree of life and eat it and live forever. So the Lord God banished him from the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth the garden away of the tree of life. Now, um, going back to the skins, immediately God, immediately God took an animal or animals. And killed them. And it doesn't say anything about it. In Genesis. But the, still the concept. And the picture is there. Those animals died. The, the covering that Adam and Eve. Had made for themselves. Was unsuitable. You know. The Bible doesn't say that God. Ceased to fellowship with Adam and Eve. It just says that they were. They were kicked out. Of the garden of Eden. So that they could, they would be away from the tree of, of life. And immediately the sacrifice of these animals for Adam and Eve. So that their, their nakedness would be covered by their skins. Coincides with the fact that the animals died and their, bloods, their blood was shed. To cover the sin of Adam and Eve. So that God could continue fellowshipping, fellowshipping with them. God continued to fellowship with Adam and Eve even after um, they were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. God continued to, to, to speak to them and talk to them. And not the way that he did before. 
not the way that he did before, but that, that covering is a picture of what God's plan was for all of us. God never had a plan. God's plan was not to, not to keep us. He, he had to keep Adam and Eve from, from accessing the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But he didn't have a plan to keep us from or the tree of life. But he didn't want us to, to uh, be separated from it forever. Right? God, it was not, God was not satisfied with the fellowship that he had with Adam and Eve after they sinned. And so it was necessary for him to send Jesus to restore all of that fellowship. Okay? Um, we're going to... Do we have... Do you have Genesis 4, 7 up there with the, in the King James Version? I'll check it. He's abandoned his post. Crystal makes it look easy, doesn't she? <laughs> well, no, not that one. That's a good one, and we'll get there hopefully today. But that's not the right one. Genesis, what did you say? I'm sorry. Huh? Genesis, Genesis 4 7. Yeah, we got it. Okay. King James. King James. There, there it is. Okay. NIV. Oh, NIV. That's NIV. At the bottom. Just flip it over at the bottom. We can only do so much up here, sir. I know. <laughs> Who's got a King James Bible? <laughs> Casey to the rescue. There's Casey. Pat, will you stand up and read, read Genesis 4 7 up? If thou doest well, Thank shalt you. thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, send life at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. Okay? Well, let's, let's stop here for a second. Sin lieth and crouches at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire. Thee is Adam, or thee is Cain. His desire is sin. Okay? Right. And thou shalt rule over him. That means that Cain should rule over the sin that is crouching at the door. With me? Now, let's look at let's look at Genesis chapter three. I'm kind of getting a little ahead of myself, but I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll fix it later. Genesis chapter three, verse 16 in King James. There's some similar language I want you to see. That that part under the under here that says, Unto thee shall be his desire, thou shalt rule over him. Does that remind you of anything? What was what was Eve's curse? Four sixteen. I gotta figure out how this thing is supposed to work. That'll get some super glue good to my head. Sixteen. Sixteen. Pat, can you read Genesis three sixteen out of your King James? Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. And he shall rule over thee. Thy desire shall be unto thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Okay. That's a little that's similar language, isn't it? As to what to what he's talking about, sin crouching at the door. And that's important. Just want you to, to, to catch that. Okay. So here's God's here's God's message to Cain. If you do what's acceptable, it'll be accepted. If you do what's not acceptable, you're going to be rejected. If you do, but be careful because sin is, is crouching at the door waiting for you. His desire is to have you, but you must rule over him. Okay? You get that picture? That's a, that's a real powerful picture. Number one, Number one, what, what happened? What did what happened to Cain first when his when he got rejected? He got mad. Very good. Very good. He got mad. Who did he get mad at? He got mad at God. He got mad at God because he wanted to do it his way. 
And God's message to him is very basic. And that message that God put forth, the message that God put forth to Cain is exactly the message that still holds for us today. If you do what is acceptable, you'll be accepted. If you don't do what is acceptable, you'll be rejected. And here's the deal. Sin is crouching at the door. Amen. And his desire is that he would have you. And, and you must rule over him. Now let's look at this. You, you see that picture? There's a door. There's kind of a... There's kind of a doorway, and you get the you get the you get the sense that, well, on this side of the doorway, I'm safe. But if I go through this doorway, sin is there waiting. There's this wild beast who is there, who is who is ready to pounce on me. And his desire is not his desire is not just to 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 cause me to sin. His desire is not just to, you know, to trip me up and make me fall. His desire is, is to consume me and to become one with me like the curse that was on Eve. He, the, the part of the curse of Eve was that your desire is going to be for your husband and for him only. I don't know why, I don't know why it's a curse, but, but it's in there, all right? Okay? And... and <clears throat> And he says, you must rule over it. And so, the, isn't, that, isn't that a picture of what sin does to us as God's people? I mean, sin, sin the, the devil doesn't want to just trip you up and so that you stumble or fall every once in a while. Sin, want, he wants to consume you. He want, sin want, the devil wants your sin to, to get to the point to where it is ruling over you and, and you your desire is not what you know you should desire but your desire is it is for that to do that sin amen that he might that he might consume you that and, and you know the, the thing of it is the the world turns everything around the world turns everything the the world tells us that god's the one that's waiting for us to sin so that he can punish us well, the, the world's not the one that's waiting for you to sin so that he can, he can the devil is. He's waiting at the door. Want the handheld? Did my ear, did something happen to my ear? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to fix it on my tie here like it used, like used to be. So. Maybe that'll be better. But... <clears throat> That's what, that's what sin does. Sin is sin's the one, and the devil is the one who's waiting for you. Here, step out that door. Come up. Come out from under that covering. Come out from that safe place where I can get at you. Because when I get at you, I'm, I'm going to twist you around, and I'm going to consume you. That's what, that's what sin wants to do. And that was the warning that God was putting before Cain. He's saying, Cain, look. Look, this is, this, is, this is the way to approach me. This is the way to please me. And the, the, the standard that has been set is that an offering, an offering suitable to come before the Lord has to be an offering of blood. Okay? And, and Cain's like, well, I don't want to do that. I, I am a, I'm a person who wants it my way. I grow corn and I grow, I grow wheat and I grow barley and I grow those kinds of things. And I'm going to bring that to you. I know what the standard, I know what the standard is. The standard is, so if, in order for me to have to do that, well then I'm going to have to go to Cain or Abel to my brother and trade with him and get a lamb. And I'm going to have to bring that to be acceptable to you. I don't want to follow your rules. I want you to accept me the way that I am. And Cain stepped through that door. In disobedience to God. <clears throat> it, it would be unfair for God to punish Cain if Cain did not know what was right. Okay? But Cain knew what was right. He just didn't want to do it. 
Okay? God had set the standard that the offering was, was something of blood. And, you know, it's continued on. If you turn, turn over to Leviticus. We don't do Leviticus much. But, yeah, Jack. It came like grain, and that type of thing. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You're, you're, you turned over to Leviticus. I want to read you uh, first a couple of chapters in Leviticus. Not a couple of chapters. Okay. Hopefully I'm going to read you a chapter in, in Hebrews, but not Leviticus. I know where it is. It's right there. Leviticus chapter... Did I tell you one? Yeah, Leviticus chapter one. I think it's interesting that, that Leviticus chapter one starts with this. Okay? It says, The Lord called to Moses and spoke to him from the tent of meeting, and he said, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When any of you brings an offering to the Lord, bring as your offering an animal from either the herd or the flock. If the offering is a burnt offering from the herd, he is to offer a male without defect. He must present it at the entrance to the tent of meeting so that it will be acceptable to the Lord. He is, this is in a doorway too, okay? So you get that? Is it to bring it, to, you bring the offering to the entrance of the tent of meeting so that it will be acceptable to the Lord. He's to lay his hand on the head of the burnt offering and it will be accepted on his behalf to make atonement for him. He is to slaughter the young bull before the Lord. Then Aaron's sons, the priests, shall bring the blood and sprinkle it against the altar on all sides of the entrance of the tent of meeting. He is to skin the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. The sons of Aaron are to put the pieces on the altar and arrange the wood on the fire. Then Aaron's sons, the priests, shall arrange the pieces, including the head and the fat on the, on the burning wood that is on the altar. He is to wash the inner parts and the legs with water. And the priest is to burn all of it on the altar. It is a burnt offering. An offering made by fire, an aroma pleasing to the Lord. And yeah, Russ. And that's called a law. It's a totally consumed. I know law. A totally consumed sacrifice. And so when we come, when we come before God, and when when Cain was coming before God to be accepted, and understand that the tent of meeting is a place. The tent of meeting is where Moses. And God spoke face to face. Is a, is a place where we enter and approach God. And so if we want to enter and approach God, God has a specific way that it has to be done. And it has to be done with an offering of blood. And Cain is coming to God and saying, look God, I got this corn. It's beautiful. I have these tomatoes. They're beautiful. I raise them with my own hands. They're without spot. They're without blemish. They're perfect. I brought them to you. You have to let me in. God says, no, Cain, I don't. I've told you what's acceptable. And what is acceptable is a blood sacrifice. And Cain gets mad, says, that's not fair. I don't want to do it that way. And God says, look, Cain, easy now. Sin is crouching at the door waiting for you. And he wants to have you. He wants to consume you. And, and, and you must rule over him. And rather than, rather than go back, stay in that place of safety, go to his brother, get a lamb, bring that lamb, and sacrifice it before God, and, and, and have fellowship with God the way God says that he has to be approached. Cain gets mad and goes out and kills his brother. Yes. Hey, sorry, Pastor. I just, I can't hold back anymore, okay? Um, I'm a little bit confused as far as like, uh, like Ab um, Abel's offering was accepted because his... I don't want you to be confused. I know. Abel's offering was from the, um, from the animals, basically, and then the Cain's offering was from the produce of the land. Right. I know you're saying that the... The, the animals' sacrifices were acceptable, but the it was really just because of that, because I'm looking in 
Well, yes, Leviticus, there are also grain offerings and, and right, many right. other offerings. Yeah, yeah and Leviticus it, and, 2. And all, all, all of those are Thanksgiving offerings mm -hmm. or uh, are different kinds of offerings uh, to God, but they are not offerings of atonement to, be, to cause us to be pleasing before the Lord. Well, in Leviticus chapter 2, it talks about the grain offering, and it does say it's um, pleasing to the Lord. It is pleasing to the Lord, but it's not an atonement offering. It's not something that blots out our sin. It's a, it's a thank offering. Well, how do we know which kind of offering Cain and Abel is given? I'm, I'm just curious. Well, in the context of the scripture, uh, just previous to this, that Cain, at, you know, God has slain an animal, and then we have that same offering, or we have God at, or Cain and Abel approach, trying to approach God on, you know, to be pleasing to God. Okay? I don't know if that makes, if, if that gets it for you, but... Um, Leviticus 23 has... It didn't. Hmm? Leviticus 23. We're, Read that chapter. The whole, the whole premise, the premise in the passage of Scripture is about sin. Okay? And what God did for sin. None of, none of, I mean, Adam and Eve have sinned. God is taking care of sin. Abel and Cain are trying to fellowship with God. And, and the, in the context, it's about sin. After, when, when God is warning uh, Cain, he's talking about sin. Mm -hmm. And so this is about covering sin. And the offerings of grain that were, no, were not for, for sin offerings. The offerings of grain were for peace offerings, for thank offerings, for those different kinds of things. Not an offering or an atonement offering for sin. Yeah, Dan. And that atonement, well, the Bible, first of all, has a trail of blood through it. Sure. And all look forward to Jesus Christ, who's atoning blood. Because then blood's not only able to hide sin, right. but to wash away sin. Uh, innocent, just like these animals were innocent. Right. And supposed to be pure and without defect. And it all points towards them in the sure. Old Testament. But that was, I, I, I know, I hear what Caleb is trying to say. Is right. Our offerings God accept that there's only one right. that can not only cover our sin, but wash them away. And, and, and this is that temporary and, and the, blood if, sacrifice. When, if you study, what Russ said something about Leviticus 23. Russ, what was Leviticus 23? Leviticus 23 tells you when you bring those offerings and uh, it's that time or here. The grain offerings and stuff like that Right, and and usually before those are brought, there's a blood sacrifice brought. Yeah. Before you could bring a, a peace offering, a grain offering, then the blood sacrifice had to be made first. But we're talking about sin. I think my main question is. <laughs> I think my pastor, my, my main question is, when it's talking about sin here in Genesis chapter four. Yeah. I'm wondering, was the sacrifice itself to sin, or was the way that he was living and the way his heart was, was that was he living oh, a sinful lifestyle? Most definitely. Cain's sin, Cain's sin was not that the offering necessarily was bad. Cain's sin was his refusal to recognize, uh, I'm gonna, it'll clear up as, as we go on here for you, but his, his refusal um, to do to do it God's way, and his the the uh, his rebellion really in his heart to say, look, you know, I got a good idea. I you know what I what I want to do, what I what I feel like is right. You should accept. And God said, no, it's not what you feel like is right. It's what I've already shown you. It's all right. What he, what I've demonstrated to you. If you want, if you want to have your sins atoned for and you want to fellowship with me you come this way you know it is it's about approaching god and being at peace with god and the only way that we can approach god and be at peace with, peace with god is by the blood of christ i'm going to weld it to my glasses i'll add give me some 
uh, well, it's some zip ties and zip ties in my glasses right there for next week. Caleb, are you clear? You yeah, think? That, yeah, it'll, it'll get better, now, I promise. Aaron. Okay? <clears throat> but I want, I want you, to, in this burnt offering in Leviticus chapter 4, I want to draw your attention back to verse 4. It says, it will be accepted to make atonement for him or for you. And so, this is really speaking, and, and that kind of points back to, to what Cain and Abel were trying to do. They were trying to make an atonement offering. Because if he'd done it right, God clearly says to him, if you, if you do what is right, it'll be accepted. If you don't do what is right, it's going to be rejected. And, and so there's only one way for our sins to be atoned for, and it's with the blood and the spotless blood of, a, of an animal. Okay? And we, you know the rest of the story, right? Turn to Hebrews chapter 10. I want to get this in for sure. Oh my gosh, it went fast. I know it might not go fast for you, but it went fast for me. Hebrews chapter 10. It says, The law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the realities themselves. <clears throat> for this reason, it can never by the same sacrifices repeated endlessly year after year make perfect those who draw near to worship. Follow me? That's why he's talking about this, the, the, the offering of, of bulls and goats to make atonement. The ones that, that, could ha that were happening year after year with bulls and goats can no, you know, they couldn't uh, perfect us. It could, they couldn't wash us sinless. It says if it could, they would have stopped being offered. For the worshipers would have been cleansed <clears throat> once and for all and would no longer have felt guilty for their sins. But those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins because it's impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. And so what God was requiring of Cain and Abel was that they bring an offering before the, before the Lord to acknowledge that they had sinned, to acknowledge that they were imperfect, and that their, their sins had been atoned for by the blood of that animal. And, that, and then they could approach God that way. <clears throat> All right. It says, but those sacrifices are an annual reminder of sins because it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. With burnt offerings and sin offerings, you were not pleased. Then he said, Here I am. It is written about me in the scrolls. I have come to do your will, O God. First he said, Sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not desire, nor were you pleased with them. Although the law required them to be made. Then he said, here I am. I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second. And by that will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties again and again. He offers the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. And since that time, he awaits or he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. Because by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. That's us. That should excite you. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First he says, this is the covenant I will make with them. After that time, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. And then he adds, their sins and their lawless acts I will remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, there is no longer any sacrifice for sin. All right. <clears throat> so we have, we have the fact that God has sent Jesus into the, into the earth to be a, a forever atoning sacrifice for us that there never has to be another animal that gives its life to cover the sins of men, mankind. Our, they're, not covering, they're not covered anymore. Our sins are washed away by the blood of Jesus, right? 
Yes. There's only one way now that we can approach God. We approach God through the blood of Christ, through the veil of Christ, to, to, to fellowship with Him and to speak with Him and to pray with Him, to allow Him to speak to us, to have His, to have His Holy Spirit dwell in us and, and write His words and His, and, and His laws and His statutes on our hearts. Now let's go back to sin, okay? Sin is crouching at the door waiting for you. Is sin still crouching at the door waiting for you? Yes. 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 It is. Absolutely. You know what? There are so many doors <laughs> for us to go through. There are so many doors that lead us to destruction. I think in, in, in Matthew chapter 7, and Jesus is winding up the, the, the Sermon on the Mount, he said it this way, broad and wide is the gate that leads to destruction, but narrow is the path that leads to life and righteousness. Hallelujah. That's, that's still in, in force today. There are so many paths, there are so many doors that I can walk through that will lead me to destruction. There are so many paths that will lead me to, I mean, you know, Adam and Eve and all that, they never had, they never had the, the internet or cell phones or, uh, you know, sin is sin. I mean, the, the devil's no different than he was back in those days. He just has, he just has a bigger toolbox, I think. But, the, the, but victory over sin is still the same. Victory over sin is still the same. If I, if I do what is acceptable to God, then I'll be, I'll be accepted and I'll be pleasing. If I do what is not acceptable to God, and, then I'll be rejected. Not, not rejected in the sense that I'll be kicked out of God's family or anything. But I'm going to, I'll be outside of that covering and outside that place where the devil has access to me. The, 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 the um, doors, I mean a door really kind of is, a, a, to me, I, in my mind, I see decisions, choices. The choices that I make, the things that I do. When I, you know, I can, it would have been real easy for, for Cain if he would have humbled himself and say, you know what? Well, the right way for me to approach God is to go over to Abel and, and off trade with him. And, you know, here's the thing, you know, Abel didn't just eat meat. And Cain probably didn't just eat vegetables. They probably swapped all the time. You know, probably wasn't a big deal. They probably traded all the time. It was, a, it was what was in Cain's heart to say, I don't want to do it that way. It was rebellion before God and rebellion to what God wanted for him and, and to, to approach him. And it's still the same. We can't, we, can't go, we can't go before God any way we want. We fellowship. We have access to fellowship with God because of the blood of Christ. And, and Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commands. You know, the Bible says that, that we're not our own. We're bought with a price. And so the choices I make, I still, I'm a slave to God, right? Um, I'm a slave to righteousness. And the choices I make, the doors that I go through, should lead me to righteousness. They should be the doors that God tells me to go through. They should be, it should be the path, that, the narrow path that leads to life that I should want to stay on. Right? Because there's lots of different paths for me to get off. There's lots of, there are lots of exits in life that will lead me to places where the devil will have his way with me. Yes? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Turn to John chapter 10. I got two things I want to share with you before we go. John chapter 10. Verse 7 through 10. Is that up there? This is about the sheep and his flock. Jesus, therefore Jesus said again, I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All who have ever come before me were thieves and robbers. Now, when you hear when you hear so when you hear this passage of scripture, I'm the gate for the sheep. What do you think of? Well, it's the way I get to heaven, right? There's only one way to get to heaven through Jesus, through 
would you be, that's part of it, but I, would you be okay if I tell you that's not all of it? Yes? Maybe? I'll see if I can prove it. Since all who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Who enters, who enters through me will be saved. That's true. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. And I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I like King James a little better now. And they have it abundantly. And so, so Jesus is saying, I, I'm, I'm not only the gate. I'm not only the gate that leads to heaven, but I'm also the gate that leads to life in abundance. I'm the gate, I'm the gate that, that will bring you into blessing. If you, if you, if you go through this gate, and what, and what do you think that gate would be? That gate would be, if I make my decision, the decisions of my life according to the word and the will of God, then God says I can walk in blessings, I can walk in truth. I can walk in, and be blessed and, and walk in the abundance. But there's other gates that will not take me there. I have the right to choose those gates. But God does not have, God is not required to bless me when I do it Cain's way and do whatever I think is best for me. Yay? Yes? No? Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 11. I'll close with this. Deuteronomy 11 verse 16. And then I got a verse in Deuteronomy 28. But they're, they're related. And I want you to see this. It, it's up there, sir. Okay. Deuteronomy, you got it? Be careful, or you will be t enticed to turn away and worship other gods. I just want to point this out. When... when God always likens our, our sin, especially worshiping other gods, to adultery, right? And and when we when we talk when he talked about Cain stepping through that door, um, that sin wanted to that sin wanted to marry Cain. They wanted to become one with Cain, an, an adulterous ugly marriage where sin overtakes him and, and, and causes him to, to lose that blessing and abundance of God. <clears throat> You'll turn away and other gods and bow down to them. <clears throat> Be careful. Next verse. Then the Lord's anger, anger will burn against you and he will shut the heavens so that it will not rain and the ground will not yield prairies and you will soon perish from the good land the Lord is giving you. Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds and tie them as a symbol on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. That's all I have. That's all you have. Now, you have Deuteronomy 28, verse 6? Yes, sir. This is the last one. A gate's where you go in and go out, right? A gate, you know... This is another verse that comes to my mind is the one that, where God says, you know, you're in, you can be in the world, but not of the world, right? So there has to be a way for me to go out into the world and prosper and be blessed as opposed to going out into the world and being just like the world and, and, and having sin destroy me. Amen. Right? Deuteronomy 28, 6 says this, you'll be blessed when you go in, blessed when you go out. And I want to go through the doorway where the Word of God is written over the doorposts and the lentils. Hallelujah. And, and of course, the, the doorway where the door where the where the Word of God is written over the doorposts and the lentils, that Jesus is the Word. And so when I when I go out into the world and I go out in the decisions and, and that God wants me to go out in that, that are according to God's will, I can expect to be blessed. I can expect to be protected. I can expect for God for God to go with me and for, for him to overshadow me and to be my strong tower and my refuge. But if I go out and I go out through any other door, I go out on my own will, I go out on my own decisions, I go out and on my own wisdom, then then I'm not gonna be 
God does not, and God's not bound by his word to watch over me. I'm putting myself in a place of danger where the enemy can have his way with me. And, and he was warning Cain. Cain. Sin's crouching there. He, it's a, sin is a wild beast that doesn't, doesn't want to just trip you up. Doesn't, not, just, not just some, some imp that wants to, you know, to cause you some, some turmoil in your life. Sin wants to consume you. It's the devil who comes to rob, kill, and destroy. And sin is what he uses. And so he's, God's warning Cain and, says, and, says, and he's warning us too. Look. There's one gate. There's one gate that we have safe access. That we have safe passage. And it is the gate that where the doorposts and the, and the lentils are covered with the word of God. The decisions of God. The blessings of God are written. And, 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 and when I may live my life according to those things, God will be with me. God's going to be with me in trouble or out of trouble. But his blessings come when I walk, when I go through those gates. Does that make sense to you? I mean, I don't, I don't want you to leave confused today. It, it, the, those foundational things that happen in Genesis happen, um, you know, the, they're there to point the direction. Nothing's new under the sun. We have, we have, and we are called for number one, the number one call in our life as, as children of God is to be pleasing to Him <clears throat> above all things. I would... I was going to read you um, uh, Tozer today. I'll just tell you about it as we close. <clears throat> the title of, if you, how many of you have a Tozer? I know you men do. Got a Tozer book? The title today is Happy or Holy? Happy or Holy? And it's, it's real, the best way to be is Holy and happy, right? That's the best way to be. Yes. But basically what it says is this. If it comes down to this, if it comes down to uh, if, what, if what makes me happy makes me unholy, then better for me to be unhappy hmm. and holy than happy and unholy. That's a tough Man. one kind of what we're talking it's kind of what we're talking about today you know uh for me to be holy for me to be holy means that my life is pleasing to god i can only be pleasing to god when i walk according to his will and and if god it, it would be better for me to be pleasing to god and miserable than displeasing to god and happy i thank god for this I can be both. Amen. I can be holy and I can be happy. Started last week with Psalm chapter 1. Blessed is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Stand your feet. Father, I bless these folks in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you that you are with us. We walk through many gates, many doorways every day. Father, we have many decisions of life to make. We have opportunities to, uh, to choose or not to choose. And Father, I thank you that you have put in us your Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit directs. Your word tells us that you direct our paths. That you guide our lives. And Father, I thank you that you guide us and direct us to the doors which lead to you. The doors which lead us into a place of fellowship with you. The doors that lead us to a place where we are protected by you. Father, we are aware today that sin is crouching at the door and wants to destroy us. And Lord, I thank you that we don't have to go out the doors. We don't have to, to go out those doors and put ourselves in, uh, in the face of the enemy. Father, you have a door for us in Jesus Christ. You have a door for us in his word. Father, that leads us to you. And so, Lord, I thank you for the choices that we make. I thank you for the doors that we go through. Uh, Lord, I pray that we, we choose those, we make those decisions which will cause our lives to be holy. And Lord, I pray also that you will cause us to be happy 
in those holy decisions. Lord, I pray a blessing on our, our families today. I thank you for every child that we have. Lord, I pray that you would just put a, a, your, your protection over them. Lord, I pray that for those who are not believers in you, that are our sons and daughters of our families, Lord, I pray that they have favor with you. Lord, that your Holy Spirit goes and, and ministers to their heart and, and, and is constantly wooing them. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would just put people around them that will speak the truth of the gospel and the love of Jesus Christ into their lives, that they would walk through that door that leads to you. Father, I just pray that you protection over them until they come into the kingdom, Lord, that, that they would be protected. And, and, and Father, that, that they would have that opportunity to, to accept you as Lord and Savior. Lord, I pray over our marriages today. I pray, Father, that they would be examples to our children and our grandchildren, to our neighbors. Father, that husbands would love their wives like Christ loved the church, that, that wives would, would be submitted to their husbands and, and, and they would walk together as, as equal partners. That, that, would, that would be just a glorious reminder to everyone around us what, it's, what the, the beauty and, and the grace and the blessing that it is having a godly spouse. Father, that we would encourage and, and, and cause others to desire um, blessed marriages. Father, because our, our, our country needs to see that today. And so, Lord, I pray protection over us as we go. Father, I pray that we go, that you have created these people for such a time as this, that they are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. They have, they have testimonies to, that will overcome uh, the enemy. Father, that, that you give us opportunities to share what you have done for us with those around us, Lord, that you might be glorified. Father, we give, we give you praise in all these things. Amen and amen. 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 Hallelujah, I love you. Give somebody a hug. Be quiet. Don't be so quiet.